Welcome to the next chapter about how to mix live music. Now we're going to start applying EQ to acoustic instruments such as guitar, violin and brass. Some of these instruments are quite sensitive and care needs to be taken to avoid feedback. Even electroacoustic guitars, that is hollow bodied guitars with built in electronics to capture the sound, they can feed back if placed close to a stage monitor speaker. So, first a reminder of the golden rule. Always apply a high pass filter. We're going to follow a trend we set last time. Reduce the low EQ shelf by 6 dB for all the acoustic instrument mics. Unless it's specifically for a bass instrument. It's the mid bands where we're going to exercise our creativity. First, let's consider the acoustic guitar. This will either have built-in electronics to use with a DI box or it will need a microphone pointing somewhere between the main hole and the base of the neck. Because of the feedback risk, a mid-band may be needed to reduce the danger frequency. To discover the danger, greatly increase the mid-band gain and sweep the frequency. Find the frequency which produces the loudest howl or squeal and cut the gain there by 3 to 6 dB. If you're using the TF mixer, increase the Q to narrow the frequency band affected by the cut. So the impact of the sound on the instrument itself is minimized. If you find there's no feedback danger, or if you have an additional mid band available, like on TF mixers, then you can consider how to shape the sound. Try reducing the gain around 600 Hz to make the sound less boxy. Or reduce around 5 kHz for a less stringy sound. Reducing frequencies between 1 and 2 kHz can help to create a greater sense of space for lead instruments and vocals. So it's always good to listen how several instruments work in combination. Now let's consider a solo acoustic instrument such as a violin. Always discuss mic placement with the performer in case they have a strong preference based on their own previous experience. You could use a clip on mic if the musician allows it or a mic on a stand pointing towards the center of the F holes. But remember you have to be far enough away to avoid bow contact. Violins are sensitive instruments, so their mics could pick up a lot of surrounding noise. So I think you already know what to do. Apply HPF. Reduce the low band by about 6 dB and the high band by 3 dB. Then apply the same technique as the acoustic guitar for reducing the risk of feedback. And for shaping the sound, it's a similar story. Create a less boxy sound around 600 Hz or a less stringy sound around 5 kHz. If there are two such acoustic instruments, don't reduce the same frequencies for both. Make one less boxy and the other less stringy. So they complement each other. Listen to these two examples featuring electroacoustic guitar and violin. Firstly, with no mid band EQ applied. Secondly, with 600 Hz reduced for violin and 1.5 kHz reduced for guitar to give the violin more space. Hear how they maintain their natural character without getting in each other's way.
One final word of advice about these instruments, particularly violins with clip-on mics. Watch out where the musician rests the instrument when not playing it. Instruct them not to leave them close to a monitor speaker <laughs> to reduce the chance of nasty feedback. Now let's move on to brass and woodwind, which tend to be louder and therefore less problematic to mic up. For saxophones, trumpets and trombones, position the mic 5 to 10 centimeters away from the horn. Immediately apply the high pass filters without question. Then reduce the low shelf a few dB for most brass and wind instruments. I would even do this to low instruments like a trombone, if there's also a bass guitar and kick drum in the mix. What you do with the high shelf depends on your preference. If you want the brass to cut through the mix as accents, try adding up to 3 dB. If you want them to blend with the band, try reducing 3 dB. Feedback isn't normally such a problem with brass. So let's consider how the mid-band can shape the sound. As with previous instruments, cutting the mid-band around 500 Hz will reduce body from the sound, giving a feeling of brightness. While cutting around 3 to 4 kHz will reduce clarity and presence. The fundamental frequencies for popular brass instruments are within the 200 Hz to 2 kHz range. You could choose to boost these a little to obtain a more defined sound. Or you could reduce them a little to make space for lead vocals. Compare these next two examples using different EQing strategies. The first is with the mid-band boosted and the high cut a little as shown here. The mid-frequency is chosen to suit the pitch range of each instrument. The second clip is with the mid reduced by 6 dB around 1 kHz and with the high band increased by 3 dB. Notice this second clip sounds less honky and more crisp. Even though the first example sounds more realistic, the second might fit better into a full band mix. Listen to the brass alongside the keyboards, guitar and bass to check they have the right blend. You don't want every input to sound bright and cutting all at the same time. Make sure there are a variety of frequencies used for boost and cut amongst the mid-bands to maintain a balance across the frequency spectrum. Now we've prepared most of the popular instruments used in pop and rock bands. We're going to move on to possibly the most varied and important sound source of all, the human vocal. Join me in the next chapter when we learn how to EQ microphones used for singing. See you again soon.